In our last video, we presented the foundation theory. The foundation theory is simply that reality exists because there is a foundation. In this video, I'm going to respond to the most powerful objections to the foundation theory. The goal is to defend the foundation theory from counter arguments. Let's begin. The first objection to the foundation theory is what is called the infinite regress objection. This objection states that the foundation theory assumes, without justification, that causes and effects must be finite, but that there is a possibility that there is an infinite regress of causes and effects. So then, each state of the universe is actualized or created by another state, and so there is no need for an ultimate foundation. Now, the problem with this objection is that it, it misunderstands the foundation theory. The foundation theory does not require that reality itself is finite, or that it only existed for a finite amount of time. Reality could be infinite, or exist for an infinite amount of time, but you would still need a foundation. No matter the size or age, we can ask as to how any reality of any length or size could exist. The argument is that without a foundation, there would be nothing. The foundation is not something that comes before the chain of causes. Rather, the foundation is the ultimate basis of everything across time. The number of causes, whether finite or infinite, is irrelevant to the foundation theory. Furthermore, there is still the problem of construction. There is a construction error no matter how many pieces of dependent things we put together. Purely dependent things do not add up to an independent totality even if there is an infinite amount of dependent things. By the principle of actuality, any reality that is actual, but potentially not actual, depends upon an actualizer. This principle applies to reality of any size and length and even to infinite realities. Imagine an infinite stack of turtles. If those infinitely many turtles were a potential reality, they still couldn't be actual without some actualizer beyond them. Besides all this, an infinite regress across time would actually reinforce the need for a foundation. A foundation explains how things managed to exist for so long. If things have always existed, how do they last that long? With the foundation theory, we have a solution. Things continue to exist because the foundation of reality necessarily exists. Extending the age of the world out into infinity doesn't undermine the foundation theory. In fact, it would require the foundation theory. The second objection is that the foundation theory commits the fallacy of composition. The fallacy of composition is that a whole has all the same properties as its parts, and so it is a fallacy to assume that the blob of everything has a foundation. The problem with this objection is that it actually does nothing to discredit the foundation theory. For example, in our previous video, we argued that dependence follows from parts to wholes, and that you can only construct a total dependent reality from dependent things. However, while it is fallacious to assume that all wholes have all properties of their parts, it is not fallacious to infer that certain wholes have certain properties of their parts. It is not fallacious to infer that a floor composed of black tiles is itself black. Similarly, it is not fallacious to infer that dependent things form a dependent totality. Let's use this argument for example. Premise 1. Each section of reality has an outside cause. Therefore, the entirety of reality has an outside cause. Now, this argument is actually contradictory, because no cause can be outside of all causes. To construct reality, then, we need an uncaused foundation, otherwise we commit a construction error. The third objection has to do with virtual particles. The argument is that virtual particles can randomly appear without any cause at all. The issue with this objection is that it ignores an important distinction. We can talk about two types of effects, demanded effects and dependent effects. So, while all effects are dependent, not all effects are demanded. 
Virtual particles may not be demanded by prior states, but it is not followed that these particles do not depend on prior states. And so demand is different from dependence. When a particle spontaneously appears, or an atom spontaneously decays, nothing is demanding that these precise events would happen. However, it would be a mistake to infer that these events emerge from nothing. Furthermore, when physicists talk about these events, they are not talking as if the particles came from nothing. Rather, they say that the particle came from a wave function. The existence of a spontaneous, undemanded particle is what we would expect if the foundation is necessary. The foundation is capable of producing spontaneous effects like virtual particles. Like if we picture an eternal star that eternally produces light, the star and its effects are both eternal. If the foundation were like an eternal star that demands all its effects, then all its effects would otherwise be necessary and eternal, yet not everything is necessarily eternal. So the result is that the foundation does not demand all its effects, and this would imply that the foundation can produce some spontaneous effects. This also fits well with the principle of actuality. The principle is simply that mere potentials cannot become actual without something to actualize them. However, this principle leaves open about how an actualizer will actualize its effects, and so this objection fails. The fourth objection is that if there was a first event, then no event before that event could actualize it, and so perhaps the totality appeared in a first event from nothing with no cause or foundation. In other words, that there can be an uncaused effects within nature. However, this objection ignores an important point. Recall earlier that the principle of actuality is that a potential is actual only if something actualizes it, and so no potential becomes actual on its own. A mere potential reality has no actual powers. If you jump off a cliff, no fictional characters are going to come to your rescue. Batman is not going to come out of a fictional reality and appear in our actual reality. So a superhero cannot exit fiction uncaused. No potential reality, no matter how big or small, can become an actual reality unless something actualizes it. It is contradictory to both reason and universal experience for something to come from nothing. Differences in time, location, size, or contents don't seem to make any difference. The fifth objection is that there could be uncaused laws that allow for something to come from nothing, and so before anything exists, then anything can happen. The problem with this objection is that reason reveals that some things cannot happen. For example, you cannot watch this video without watching this video. And so, if it is argued that in thinking that anything could happen, if there were nothing, then it falls that there couldn't have been nothing. What stops fictional characters from randomly leaping into our world is that the universe is secure by having laws whose existence is secure, and these laws, at least some of them, are secure because they have a nature that precludes their non-existence. And so the basic laws provide a barrier between the land of fiction or the land of mere potential, and the land of reality, or what is actual. And so the principle of actuality provides the deepest account of the basic laws themselves. The principle predicts that no fictional characters can spontaneously appear from nothing, so the objection doesn't work. The sixth objection is that the foundation theory is complex. According to Occam's razor, the simplest hypothesis is the most probable, all others being equal. This objection states that the foundation theory multiplies complexity beyond necessity, and according to the foundation theory, reality divides into two kinds, which are dependent and independent. And so according to Occam's razor, then we should shave off the independent nature. The problem with this objection is that the simplest hypothesis is not always the correct one. For example, I know that my mother exists. The hypothesis that the universe includes such a thing as my mother is not as simple as a hypothesis that posits no mother. In this case, however, I have good reason to think that the universe is complex enough to include my mother. In a similar way, 
we have good reason to think that reality is complex enough to include both the dependent and the independent. The blob of everything does not require any outside cause or explanation, and thus by reason alone a self-sufficient independent type of reality exists. The seventh objection is from David Hume in that we can conceive of nothing. So for example, we can conceive of a reality with no cars or houses. A necessary foundation, however, is supposed to have no possibility of not existing, and therefore a necessary foundation contradicts Hume's insight into conceivability. The problem with this argument is that conceivability does not always imply possibility. To be clear, we can distinguish between conceptual possibilities and ontological possibilities. Conceptual possibilities have to do what is possible for you. However, ontological possibilities are about the nature of the world. And so, while you might be able to conceive of a world without anything, this does absolutely nothing to reveal about the world that the world could actually be nothing. Another problem with this objection is that it is conceivable that something has a necessary nature. Logicians have developed a logic of possibility, and in this logic, something cannot be a possible necessary thing unless it is actually necessary. This is because if a necessary thing does not exist, but could, then a necessary thing would have a mere potential thing which contradicts the nature of the necessary thing. Therefore, Hume's own assumptions entails that a necessary thing exists after all. The eighth objection is actually a more contemporary argument against the foundation theory. This objection is what is called the bootstrapping problem. The objection goes like this. Suppose a foundation produces an effect E. The effect of producing E is the link between the foundation and E. Call this link creation. However, Creation either has necessary existence or not. If creation has a necessary existence, then everything has necessary existence. But surely, not everything has necessary existence. Therefore, creation does not have necessary existence. But if creation does not have necessary existence, we have another problem. By the principle of actuality, something must have actualized creation. Things in E cannot actualize creation because E depends on creation. Creation is the link and not the effect. If the foundation creates creation, then creation is the effect, not the link, and therefore creation cannot exist. Now, out of all the objections to the foundation theory, this is the, perhaps the best one. However, there are several issues with it. The first thing to notice is that the objection at its core is about the link between a necessary foundation and its non-necessary effects. This helps us to actually clarify the principle of actuality. The principle of actuality predicts that every actuality is either foundational, with no potential not to exist, or actualized by something prior. In the case of creation, the only thing that could be prior is the necessary foundation itself. This foundation actualizes creation by directly actualizing some event E and this basic act of actualization of the existence of creation. However, the principle of actuality allows for both choice and chance, and so an actualizer may choose or select among several options. An actualizer of E need not also perform another act to actualize the actualization of E. Instead, it might just actualize E and that's it. Finally, the bootstrapping problem may also help us clarify about the nature of the foundation. So, if everything is a necessary consequence of the necessary foundation, then everything is necessary. But yet, everything is not necessary, like my current thoughts, for example, can fail to exist. And so, if that is right, then a necessary foundation is capable of selecting certain effects among alternative possibilities. And in this case, the foundation has a form of choice. Because it has the ability of choice, then it would bypass the bootstrapping problem. The final objection is a question. And this question is, why not just say that the universe or multiverse themselves are necessary? This objection isn't actually an objection to the foundation theory, but instead invites us to think more about what the foundation could be. 
we still haven't investigated what the nature for the foundation of reality actually is. While one could hold that the universe is the foundation, there is still a lot more steps that we have to go through. However, we have gone through the main objections to the foundation theory, and have shown that none of them actually challenge the theory. So, we have defended the foundation theory against objections. It's clear that the foundation theory is a good theory to explain why anything exists at all. I once again want to thank Josh Rasmussen for his work, as this series would have not been possible without his help. Now for the rest of the series, we will be going over different aspects of reality that can give us many clues as to what the nature for the foundation of reality is.